One of the most controversial topics in programming has always been the college degree. There's traditional education and then there's self-taught programming. And in past videos, I've expressed my opinion on college degrees and how important they are for software engineering roles. But I haven't specifically spoken about self-taught programming because I did go the traditional education route. But in this video, I have someone who didn't. My friend Kenny Gunderman is in town and he's a self-taught programmer who works as a software engineer and he's also a YouTuber. So I had him come over so that I can make a video specifically about self-taught programming. I have a lot of strong opinions on this topic, but since I come from a traditional education background, I did want to get that other perspective from an actual self-taught programmer. So I'm going to share my opinions and advice first, and then we'll cut to his opinions and advice later on in the video. But before we do that, I do want to mention the fitting sponsor for this video, which is Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery is a platform with dozens of courses and online resources to help people learn how to code and then get hired in the tech industry. And it's a really fitting sponsor for this video because the founder of Zero to Mastery is also a self-taught programmer. They have over 50 courses and over 10,000 lessons in a bunch of different categories. Zero to Mastery has courses for every step of your career, whether you're a beginner learning how to code or whether you're a programmer trying to get a job or whether you're a working professional and you just want to advance your skill set. They have world-class instructors and over a million students have enrolled or graduated from their courses with over a thousand hours of content and they're adding new courses all the time. So there's tons of content, whether you want to be a web developer or do cybersecurity or do machine learning or web three or heck, even if you want to work on your soft skills. And one of the coolest things they do is they have a career path quiz and based on your current skill set and career goals, they recommend the perfect path of learning for you. They have monthly annual and lifetime memberships and a ton of people use it and I think it's totally worth it. So if you guys are interested definitely go into the description of this video click the link and check it out it's an awesome platform thank you for sponsoring this video zero to mastery and now let's get back to my opinions on self-taught programming all right so coming from a traditional education background my advice has always been is college great yes do you need it absolutely not now, of course, that's a little bit of a generalization because there are programming jobs out there that do require a college degree. When it comes to advice on this, like should you go the traditional education route versus self-taught programming route, it is really specific to you as a person. But since this is YouTube and I'm speaking to a lot of you here, I'm going to generalize and say that most programming jobs nowadays do not require a college degree. Over the past few years, people have started to place a lot of value on self-learning. And since everybody moved to online and people have developed all of these resources and courses, people understand how easy it is to self-learn. And there's absolutely no way that anybody can say nowadays that a traditional education is necessarily more valuable than a self-taught education. The same information that you will be learning in traditional education, you can teach yourself. That information is out there for everybody to learn. It's more dependent on you as a person and what environment you wanna put yourself into so that you can learn this stuff in the best way possible. College is great, right? You get to learn alongside peers and develop your skills and learn from your peers and instructors who have different knowledge and different things. And you get face-to-face -face interaction with people, which makes communicating really easy for learning and retaining all of this information. However, this doesn't necessarily mean it's the best environment for learning. First of all, it's tough to generally say that college computer science is a great thing to go into considering every computer science program at every different university or college is completely different. The instructors will be different, the people will be different, the environment will be different, the material will be different. And when you're enrolled in a program in college and you're having a tough time learning from an instructor, the way to change your instructor would be to drop the class or switch the class or maybe switch universities altogether into a different program. Whereas if you're self-teaching and you're trying to learn something and you have a certain resource that isn't doing it for you, you could switch, take a different course, learn from a different online instructor, and maybe learn it from someone else that easily. I just don't necessarily think there's any right way for you to learn. Just because you went to college doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to know more or be any better of a programmer than somebody who's self-taught. And just because you're self-taught doesn't mean you know any better or are gonna be any better of a programmer than somebody that went to college. Because of societal conventions, people put a lot of value on the college degree. However, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in college, I remember there were a lot of people partying, sleeping in class, skipping class, and even people cheating. But when it comes to self-taught programming, there's also flaws there. Some people have a tough time learning on their own, whether it's because they can't commit to a schedule of learning and practicing every single day, or because they have comprehension issues and they're the type of learner that needs to ask questions and have face-to-face -face communication with somebody to actually learn. Generally to me, it doesn't really matter which way you choose to learn. Whether you wanna go traditional education or self-taught programmer, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you learn and develop your skills, right? Until it comes to 
the financial commitment. Now, education is extremely valuable and it's actually considered investing in yourself. There's been a charge for education for forever and valuable educational resources can become very pricey, but it's up to you to not make bad financial decisions. This is extremely important to understand because a lot of people just look to programmers and people that have software engineering roles and see how much money they make and just think, I wanna do that, let me get to there, no matter what it takes, I'll do whatever, I'll pay the most money for education and just, just get me to that point. But you shouldn't just automatically equate an expensive education to a valuable education. And thinking of an education like an investment is really important, right? You could buy a really expensive stock, but maybe it's actually not that valuable. And over time, you're going to lose money for investing in that stock. Well, when you invest in your education, you want a valuable education that is going to have a return on that investment. So you might pay for your education, but it makes you a lot of money in the long run. You get a successful career out of it and it's totally worth it. You do not, however, want to pay for an expensive education and then not make a lot of money from it. And this happens to a ton of people when they go to a really expensive school and they think it's going to be a really great life decision, but they don't actually learn that much and develop the skills that they need to have a really successful career and get that return on investment. Instead, you might be stuck with a ton of student debt and no job. This could also happen at something like a boot camp that's extremely expensive that advertises that you should be able to get a job after nine weeks, but maybe they don't guarantee it, right? And you pay all of this money for the boot camp, but what if you don't get the job after? So unless you're completely fine with wasting money and going into debt, you need to be extremely careful when you're considering the investment for your education. Make sure that you fully understand what you're getting yourself into and what you're going to learn from this education and what you're gonna do with those skills afterwards to get that return on investment. So those are my opinions and advice on self-taught programming versus traditional education. But since I'm not actually a self-taught programmer, I'm now going to throw it over to Kenny Gunderman, self-taught programming YouTuber. So let's talk about ways that you could learn how to code as a self-taught programmer. Now there's a lot of great material out there online and a lot of it is actually free. Resources that I've heard a lot of good things about are Free Code Camp, The Odin Project, and then there's a great lecture series by Harvard on YouTube called CS50. You may have heard of it before. But I think it's important to realize when learning how to code, it's not a one size fits all solution. You can start with Free Code Camp, you could start with the Odin Project, or you could start with the CS50 course and maybe that just doesn't work out for you. I originally wanted to start learning how to code because I wanted to make mods for the game Minecraft. And when I started, I didn't have a, a solid structure. I didn't have a thing like the Odin Project or Free Code Camp to guide me. I watched a couple of YouTube tutorials to get my IDE set up in Java. And then I watched a couple tutorials on how to uh, make Minecraft mods. And I think another really important thing to understand is that when you are first learning how to code and you're watching tutorials, the information isn't going to click right away. I remember I was watching these tutorials on how to build these mods and I was typing out the functions and making the classes and I didn't understand really how it was working. I was kind of just copying the code and praying that it would run. But the thing is, if you do that consistently enough and you do that for a long period of time, things just start to click. And I think the best advice that I could give you is that if you want to get better at learning how to code as a self-taught programmer is you gotta keep exploring resources, figure out uh, resources that work well for you, but just don't stop coding. As cliche as that sounds, you really just gotta keep coding, you gotta keep banging your head against the wall, you gotta keep Googling to find answers to your bugs, so on and so forth. And once you start getting down the basics, you won't have to rely on a tutorial to actually code. You'll eventually be able to make your own projects without a tutorial, and that is something I highly encourage you to do. Come up with a project idea. It doesn't really matter what the project idea is. Honestly, I think a good place to start would be something like a Twitter clone or a YouTube clone or something of that nature. Just come up with an idea. It doesn't have to be unique, but don't follow a tutorial when you're writing it. Start building the project, get stuck, use Google to help guide you, so on and so forth. Eventually you do that enough, you'll build your own personal projects, maybe you'll start building more unique projects and you can build your own developer portfolio. Maybe you host that with GitHub or maybe you build a website portfolio displaying all your work. But don't expect to go from first starting to learn how to code to building these cool projects and making a portfolio overnight. It can take weeks, months, sometimes even years to get to that level. Once you build your developer portfolio, that's when the exciting part happens and that's when you can start applying for jobs. But don't be too discouraged if you start applying for jobs and you don't hear back right away. 
It can oftentimes take hundreds of applications, but the important thing is to be consistent when you apply. Another great piece of advice that I give out is that building your network as a self-taught programmer is important. Because oftentimes it's not about what you know, it's about who you know when it comes to getting a job. There's many different ways you can network in this digital age. You can join Discord groups, you can just find people online, or you can meet up with people in real life and go to tech conferences, uh, talk to the recruiters there, get their business cards, get their emails, and then reach out to them like that. So build your network, stay consistent when applying for jobs, but also stay consistent when learning how to code. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. I was just making this video to kind of cover on some of these very big general coding YouTuber topics. This is one of the ones I haven't really talked about in depth yet. I know a lot of people are learning from different ages and backgrounds, and you all have different crazy stories about traditional education, self-taught programming, getting hired in the tech industry, maybe you didn't get hired. I'd love to see those in the comments below. I always wanna read and see what's going on currently in the world. So please drop some comments so I can read from your stories. Maybe you can educate me a little bit. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna connect with me more personally, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you guys for watching this video. As always, I appreciate all your support and See you guys in the next one. Peace.